Assalamu alaikum, greetings and peace. How you guys doing? I am very excited. We have a special guest when we come back. MMA legend, Gary Goodrich. He's fought with the best of them all. And he has accepted Islam. I'm very happy to hear this good news. And we brought him on to share it with you. Let's find out why and find out the message that he has for you and all those out there. We'll see you in a few when we come back. Don't go anywhere. Assalamu alaikum, Gary. Is that you? How are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you for being with us. For the audience who doesn't know about many who are mixed martial arts fans, they know about the legend. You've been around. You were doing MMA for how long and when did you start? I did MMA for uh, 14 years. Um, I started down. Um, I started back in the early nineties. Was was that when? So the you went. When was it again? When the UFC? Most people they saw the early UFCs and they saw Hoist Gracie and they got excited and uh, then they start training. What motivated you to get into into this? Well, I thought it uh, was a good. Uh, I've always been involved with uh, strength and uh, arm wrestling, uh, things like that that uh, you can compete. And uh, the, the UFC came up, and you know I thought it was uh, something good for me to get into. I uh, I started training for it, uh, so I went into my first UFC, UFC eight, I'm with a bunch of my friends. And I had a good time. You were with. There's other legends that you were train. You were uh, were you fighting with? Uh, uh, people remember like was it Mark Coleman and uh, what yeah. was what were some of the other big names that that were in your generation? Okay, it was Mark Coleman, uh, Mark Kerr, uh, I trained also with um, Maurice Smith. He just got inducted in the UFC uh, two inductions ago. Uh, I also trained with uh, oh man, everybody who was anybody. I just wanted to learn. I trained with Sakuraba, uh, and you know, I trained, uh, man, I, and if you th if you thought of them and they were close to me, I trained with them. Um, Tom Erickson as well too um, was a good friend of mine. I tried to train with as many of the wrestlers as I possibly could. Who do, who would you say had the biggest impact on you? Uh, in fighting? Yes. Uh, the biggest impact for me is uh, was Muhammad Ali. Oh, Muhammad Ali. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you mentioned something. Tell us about this time when you, you actually met him. He came to one of your fights. Yes, as a matter of fact, I, uh, I was at a fight in, uh, in Las Vegas. And I think it was um, the Grand, Las Vegas Grand Hotel. Uh, and right on the strip, and uh, he, I was after I finished my fight. Uh, actually, before I had people said, I'm humped at least there. He's, like, he's right up to the ring, so... And I, I thought when my birthday brother, um, I say birthday brother because we're both born on January 17th. So when my birthday brother was right on my, um, around the ring, I could not lose. I just, I could not lose the fight because he was there. Uh, so I won the fight by knockout. And I went out, went up from after the fight and I gave him the biggest hug. And I was, uh, you know, I was so glad I said that. So then I said to him, I leak. And uh, of course, he couldn't talk. He shook his head, and uh, we're an embracement. And uh, I said, we're both born the same uh, the same day, January seventeenth. And the uh, only thing he said to me is, uh, "You're one tough nigger." Wow. I thought that. Uh, I thought to myself, "Yes, I love you. You can do whatever you want." <laughs> now everyone knows. Everyone knows Muhammad Ali. He's. Uh, He's a Muslim American hero. He's someone who was not only known for his great athleticism and fighting skills in the ring, but also fighting for humanity, world peace, and all of these other great things outside of the ring. And that's another thing that you also decided to follow, you you following in his footsteps. You mentioned something when you saw him, you said, Assalamu Alaikum, which means peace be with you. So we were yeah. very surprised and very elated to find out that you also, you accepted, just like Muhammad Ali did, Islam, submission to the will of the Creator, not the creation. Is this true? This is absolutely true. 
Um, I, after when I found out that that Muhammad Ali um, was passing away, um, probably shortly after we met each other, uh, I guess it was like uh, five, six years ago, maybe a little longer. When I felt that he was well, I, I knew he was well, and then I started looking into Islam, and then I, um, I, ch- I changed um, because it just made more sense to me. Uh, because if, if my birthday brother was Islam, I was going to be Islam and pay attention to it. And uh, I find uh, out of all the religions uh, that I know of, it was the best one uh, for me. And if my birthday brother can do it, I can do it. That, that, that's amazing. You know, not only you, you had that courage, that resilience inside the ring, but now... I mean, a greater battle nowadays is to come out because there's a lot of Islamophobia. Islam is the most misunderstood way of life, but it's a simple way of life. It, it calls you to have a direct relationship with the one who created you. And most people also after, like you did, who are sincere, Gary, people who are sincere and genuine, they're searching for purpose in life and they look into Islam, they come to it, they accept it because it's something that provides the proof, the evidences. And it's not something convoluted. It's not something strange and weird. Worship the creator, not the creation. Do good deeds. Be the best human being that you can be. And now, if you're looking for it, you found it. But how is it? Have you gotten some backlash because of that decision that you made? Uh, no. It no. Uh, just upset me as that. Uh, I haven't gotten any backlash. You know, um, even on the uh, social media, this is who I am. Um, if people don't like me, it's okay. I will still love them, and you know we don't have to talk. But um, that's that's my thought. Yeah, I've got no no backlash. Just um, people asking why and who, but no backlash. A lot of people are. I mentioned courage because they accept Islam. It makes sense. The pure monotheism has nothing to do with all of this. You know, all this hype out there. Many people try to put it together with radical uh, terrorism and you know you have obviously in every religion we don't dr- judge Christians by the KKK we don't judge you know Italians by the mafia or you know uh, w- there's always going to be elements out there that do bad things but Islam doesn't call people to do bad things it's called people it calls people to do good things but many people they accept Islam now they're scared they don't have the courage to come out but I like what you said you mentioned that as Muhammad Ali was carrying the torch, you feel like now this was your responsibility to continue carrying that torch. Tell us about that. Well, I was uh, drawn to Islam simply because of Muhammad Ali. And um, I figured if he can do it, exactly, I would look into it and find out myself. And um, from there, I, I was just, I was hooked. Um, you know, so I was I was involved, uh, foot and hands and body right in. Um, I feel that uh, that people get um, Islam is not that, or, or when you say Muslim, people get afraid because they don't understand. You know? They really don't understand simply because uh, radicalists that are Muslim, and sometimes uh, even people aren't even Muslim, but people say they're Muslim to uh, to make people afraid of them, and uh, it's just uh, they don't understand. It's about love. It's about peace. It's about uh, together, your family, and they don't understand this because they see all negative things. It's just like um, when you see black people. Um, sorry, you hear about black people. It's always negative, uh, you know, where they're bad, they're doing drugs. Um, they never, uh, you know, they, they're never involved in major league, uh, huge crimes, but uh, a, lot, a lot of drugs, a lot of theft, uh, you know, rape, and, you know, um, so people, people look at that like black people. Well, I'm black myself, you know, so people are seeing me in that light, but I'm not that light, you know? Um, and so you're always trying to tell people, or you always can't end up trying to prove yourself that I'm not, so you're going over who you are. And uh, that's what this is not, too. Everybody's afraid because uh, people don't understand religion, but, you know, it, um, it's like any other religion. Um, you know, you believe in that, uh, you know, I believe in Allah. You know, and if people don't understand, it's okay. You don't have to understand my religion. I respect yours. I'm the story. Yeah, many people don't know the commonality commonalities there's so many just like when you just mentioned something i can't help but to bring up the point that jews and christians who are arabic speaking they also use the word allah this simply means god in the in in the bible 
in the Arabic Bible, Allah is on the first page 17 times. It's not a different God. It's the same God. It's just in the Semitic language. Like Jesus, he spoke Aramaic. He didn't say God. The language of English didn't exist. He would say Allah, Allah, Eloh. These are the, in the Semitic languages. So it's amazing. Another, how do, how do you, when you tell people the love, the deep love, obviously we don't worship Jesus because we believe he didn't call to be worshipped. He called us to worship the Creator, not the creation. So when you tell people that we love Jesus, His Blessed Mother, there's a whole chapter named after her in the Quran. You know, when you mention these commonalities, did you get like fascinated? Were you surprised when you found out that to be a Muslim, you, you have to believe in Jesus and all the other messengers who came with Islam? Submission to the will of the Creator, not the creation. Uh, no, I never had a problem with that. Uh, it's, just, it's just the way it is. I mean, I love my religion. Um, that's who it is, and this is what I believe, and this is what the truth is. So if you're not if you're not willing to accept the truth, then, then why are you looking? You know, people think that uh, you know all these uh, radical um, people that even that say they're Muslim. This is what they do. Uh, they um, they blow up paintings, they they blow up houses, but um, they don't understand that this stuff is not Muslim. This stuff is people that uh, that come out anywhere. Uh, you know, when somebody. Uh, all these uh, mass shootings, uh, what did they say? These are all the Christian people. These are all the Jewish people. No, they just say, man, did this. Uh, when other things happen, they say, Muslim person did this. So, you know, it's, it's, the, most, it's the most religion that uh, people want to take a chance to know. They overlook it. And um, all these radicals that, um, that, that not even sometimes religion are um, Muslim, but... Uh, that that's what they are. You know, um, Allah isn't about uh, shooting or killing anybody. It's a, it's about getting along, harmony out. And this, this is this is what people don't understand. You try to tell them that it's just the same. You know, your God, you love your God. We love the true God. Um, we love Allah. Allah is not about killing and 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 blowing up or anything. He's about harmony. And these people were uh, true religion. Sorry, true Muslim. They wouldn't be doing that at all. So they're not true Muslims. Yeah, many, many people. It's good you bring this point. Like what I mentioned earlier, you have, uh, you have, bad apples in every bunch, and to go ahead and to take people who are, who are the, the black sheep, and to prompt them up as if they represent Islam. And 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 a lot of times, this is a malicious attempt by the media. And people to create fear and division amongst the people. But I think if people are genuine, when they look at uh, Muhammad Ali and they look at all the, the great work that he did outside of the ring, he's a great example who influenced you. You know, you're an intelligent person. He was a very intelligent person. Many people out there who are accepting Islam is the fastest growing way of life. They are intelli intellectuals, academics, and they're not going to come into a way of life that is calling them to do something evil, to oppress humanity, to oppress themselves or people, they're like you, they're making a, you know, a conscious, rational decision. So that leads me to my next question. When you started, you looked at, you started to uh, look into, you, you looked into other religions, you looked, you did, how long did it take you of investigating before you found that, hold on, this cannot be a, a religion from a man or a group of men, this is indeed from the Creator. Who created man? How long did it take you to finally realize that, okay, after deep contemplation, that Islam is the truth? Well, I tried to learn, I tried to learn as much as I could. I, I did try to learn as much as I could. Um, a Christian, Pentecostal, Pentecostal, and all, and all these other religions, but they didn't have the grasp, and I wanted to, uh, from Allah, um, that Allah gives. And uh, it, was, it was quite easy for me to make a bad decision. Um, after looking at several, I mean, you know, I wanted something that uh, that was in my heart and my head, rather than something everybody else does. You know, I wanted to be be who I was. Uh, you know, my family is uh, Pentecostal and Muslim. That's just the way it is. Um, and I, I don't have a problem with that at all. Um, they don't have a problem with it at all. I, I'm still getting Muslim. So the main, so you come from a Christian background, and many people don't don't know that the really the main difference is that we 
don't worship Jesus, but we worship the God of Jesus. That's really like to the point, simple. The one Jesus worshipped, that's who we worship. That's it. Simple. Straightforward. One God. Amen. Amen. Yes. Uh, before we cut out, just a couple more things. Uh, I wanted to let the audience in. Maybe they can help us out. Technically, we know that you don't have to change your name if you want to, it, unless it has bad connotations. If it's something you know bad in the name, but now you actually want to change your name and you wanted to uh, tell us about this, and, and maybe we can get some some feedback from the audience to help pick a pick a, a, a name for you. What do you think? I mean, it's great. I'm, I'm wanting to change my name actually to an African name or a Muslim name. Um, but uh, I definitely want to change my name uh, to represent who I am. I believe I'm uh, Muslim. This is who I am. This is my calling. Uh, the minute um, Muhammad Ali died, I, uh, I'm going to pick up the torch and carry on with it. Um, this is who I am. Uh, I need, I need, I would like very much to have a Muslim name. So I don't even know um, what name I should choose. I would like for people to help me um, make this decision. Whatever decision I, um, I come up with, or, um, that's what I'm legitimately, legally changing my name to. Not um, not just for show, or just for the radio. I'm changing my name completely to whatever name that uh, is more suited to me in most of them. Mashallah, I'm, I'm excited about that. I'm, I'm sure the audience, audience is excited. Maybe you guys can help out. Let's get Gary. He wants... Your feedback, what kind of name do you think suits him? A great, strong name. Go ahead and uh, share that with us. You know, people call me Eddie. Uh, that's my middle name. My first name is, uh, is, is Meho, but it's actually short for Mehmed. Meh Mehmed is in Turkish Muhammad. So I, 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 was, I was also debating now that I, I think I want to be uh, start being called that name also more, Mehmed. So you, you actually helped to, to motivate me to do something with the name also. So I want to thank you for that. <laughs> no problem, you know. The thing is, you, you can't be who you are. And um, people understand you. you gotta, this is who you are. This is who I am. Um, if, you don't, if people don't like it, that's okay. You don't have to like it. I love it and it's who I am. Um, people think that uh, Muslim, being Muslim means this and that. And people are afraid of it uh, because they don't know. Um, it's not my um, it's not my business in order to make them know what it is I try to uh, I try to be able to allow them to know what is on this but uh, you, you know you can follow it if you like or you can be with the radio, with Allah or you can be with yourself if there's nothing wrong with it just uh, be the best you, you can be be the best you can be great advice couple more questions before we cut out Hajj we are talking about Hajj. You would like to go to Hajj? I certainly would like to go there and uh, pray and uh, just meet with a bunch of uh, my brothers and, and, and love and, and uh, learn the word and teach, who, learn religion and teach, uh, be able to teach others more. Um, I would love to go there. Um, you know, all my birthday brother has been there. Uh, everybody I know that's Muslim wants to go there that have been there. Um, I just think it's the next step that I would like to take uh, in this religion. This is who I am. And uh, I believe I, I would love to go to this place. You guys hear that? Did you guys hear that? We want to get our brother Gary Goodrich. He wants to go to Hajj. Let's go ahead. We had some brothers from the Canadian Dawah Associations, the people that brought out Dave Chappelle and Mike Tyson and, and others. Um letting you guys know about Gary or any other organization. Let's try to get him to Hajj. Let's try to make it happen. And uh, with that said, what advice, Gary, do you have for others? Islam is simple. Islam is beautiful. Islam promotes peace, justice, mercy for all. It's about pure monotheism. It's about doing good in humanity, making the world a better place while you're in this place, before you go to the next place. What advice do you have for others who are who are accepting Islam, who are out there in the public eye, but they're now timid, they're scared, what people going to, they, they might be have courage to get in the ring, but they're scared to go ahead and, and, and live up to that identity of being a Muslim. What advice do you have for them? Well, uh, my advice is, uh, be who you are. Um, if this is who you are, be proud of who you are. Um, many people, you know, there's, there's different situations 
obviously I, I don't want to put anyone in harm's way, but uh, be proud of who you are. This is who I am. I'm very proud, of, very vocal of who I am. Uh, as you can see on my Facebook and Twitter, um, this is who I am. So I would say that's how the people, don't be afraid of who you are. Um, Allah brought us to, to here and he wants, uh, you know, he wants us all to do well, even if the people don't believe in him. He wants us to do it. Don't be afraid, you know. Sometimes uh, you have to be afraid in order, in order to, uh, you know, your current surroundings. But um, love all. Teach all. It was an honor. Thank you so much. May the creator of the heavens and earth, Allah, reward you. Thank you. It was an honor to have you on the Dean Show. I truly appreciate it. That's the one week. Alhamdulillah, that was our brother Gary Goodrich. Now he wants a new name. Now I said you don't technically have to change it, but he wants to. So let's help him out. Go ahead in the comments. Start leaving what you guys think will be a suitable name for Gary. He really would like your guys' input. And we want to get him to Hajj. You know Islam is based on five pillars. Real simple to understand. One is that you testify that there's nothing worthy of worship. It's in your nature. You could do it. Everyone can do it. Jesus did it. Moses did it. Last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad did it. That there's nothing worthy of worship except the one who created you. Doesn't that, is that fair? Is that reasonable? It's real simple. You're going to agree what's in your nature. You could do it. Nothing worthy of worship except the one who created you. I'm not going to worship anything in creation. Not a man, not a woman, not the sun, not the moon. Nothing in creation but the one who created creation. That's the first step. And then I'm going to acknowledge that he sent the messenger for all of mankind. And Muhammad is the final messenger. And that would automatically include and not exclude all the preceding messengers. Jesus, Moses, Abraham, Noah. They all came with the same simple message. Worship the one who created you. It's simple. And don't worship anything else. And then you establish the prayer. Five times a day minimum. Fasting during the month of Ramadan. And then paying the poor due to the poor. And then you have Hajj. Gary wants to go to Hajj. Can we make it happen? Could the Ummah help make it happen? Let's go ahead. I know there's somebody out there, an organization or an individual, you want to sponsor his trip. Go ahead. Let's put it together. Let's make it happen. And I hope that, inshallah, that we can go ahead and with open arms, welcome our brother to the deen. And those who are watching, who've also accepted it, they can go ahead and take this advice and have that courage. Be the torchbearers of like what Muhammad Ali and what Gary wants to do, continuing his legacy because he was a Muslim American hero, Muhammad Ali. He wasn't a terrorist, terrifying people, wrecking havoc in the earth. No, if you look at his track record, what was he doing? He was living Islam, Muhammad Ali, and he was helping humanity because that's what Islam calls to. It calls you to be the best version of yourself. Islam, I-S-L-A-M. Islam says love all mankind. And how can you be loving all mankind if you're blowing up mankind? That doesn't make sense. So do what's in your nature. Do what Muhammad Ali, do what all the messengers of God did. Submit to the creator, not the creation. Do good deeds. Prepare for what comes next because this life is transitory. It's going to come to an end. So when you live a righteous life here, you're going to be blessed over there and you'll be blessed here. So thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you, Gary, for being on the Dean Show. Let's help pick that name and get him to Hajj. We'll see you next time. Until then, peace be with you. Oh, don't forget to subscribe. Get the notification so you can get all of our shows sent to you when they come out. Peace. Assalamu alaikum. What am I going to do in the next 16 years? What's the best thing I can do? Get ready to meet God. Owning real estate, going in business, teaching boxers. That won't get me to heaven. God is watching me. God is God don't praise me because I beat Joe Frazier. God don't care nothing about England or America as far as your wealth is all he is. He wants to know how do we treat each other? How do we help each other? So I'm gonna dedicate my life to using my name and popularity, helping charities, helping people, uniting people, bring people bumming each other because of religious beliefs. We need somebody in the world to help us make peace. So when I die, if there's a heaven, I want to see it. Because we live how long? 80 years? The odds are everybody in this room, some of you are going to be dead 20 years from now. Some of you are going to be dead 50 years from now. Some are going to be dead 30. And some are going to be dead 60, 70 years from now. We all going to die soon. So this is a test to see where will we spend our life in heaven or hell. This is not the life now. 
your real self is inside you. Your body gets old. Some of you go to look at the fridge, look old, you don't have no teeth, your hair is leaving you, your bodies get tired, but your soul and your spirit never die. That's gonna live ever. So your body is just housing your soul and spirit. So God is testing us on how we treat each other, how we live, to see where our real home be in heaven. So this physical stuff don't last for so long. So my car, this building is gonna be here when the man who built it dead. There have been many kings and queens of England, they're all dead. After this one is gone, another one will come. So we don't stay here, we're just trustees. We don't own nothing. Even your children are not yours, if you think I'm lying. Your wife is not yours. You don't own your children, you don't own your family. So what am I saying? The most important thing about life is what's gonna happen when you die? Are you gonna to go to heaven or hell? And that's eternity. How long is eternity? So what am I gonna do when I'm through fighting? I only have 16 years to be productive, get myself ready to meet God and go to the best place. Don't that make sense? Thank you.